when it comes to the culture war that's currently raging. Take note of the fact that many conservatives tend to shy away from truly defending the values and the principles they claim to represent. Are you want to war, man? Huh? No. Meanwhile, many leftists tend to lean into their own values and principles. This is for a number of reasons. On the one hand, the mainstream media encourages wokeism. And to the extent that a celebrity does not practice wokeology, just because you go change your plots doesn't make you a woman. Right. Sorry. The mainstream media is sure to cancel them. There was a wave of, of backlash. Um, right. Just tell me where you are right now on that statement. I think anyone who is uh, in the LGBT community is a hero and, and sets an example for all of us with that, you know? I've, I've learned a lot through this. Mm -hmm. You, whoever you believe you are, Mm -hmm. and, and no one can dictate that for you or take that away from you, you know? Here's the reality. He who controls definitions controls the narrative. And he who controls the narrative controls public opinion. For the past century, leftist social engineers have managed to conflate conservatism with white supremacy. But here's the thing. Let's say I give you the term white supremacy as a real thing. The question then becomes, who over the past century have been practitioners of what you call white supremacy? When it comes to the eugenicists who believed that whites were the pure race, these people believed in left-wing politics. What about the people you call neo-Nazis? These are people who believe in national socialism. Again, socialism is a tenant of left-wing politics. In a congressional hearing this month, Rashida Tlaib tried to continue this age-old trope of tying white supremacy to the right wing but it backfired on her. Here's what that looked like. You know, we see a growing link between law enforcement personnel and white supremacy. And I know it's intentional by the white supremacists and nationalists. The issue is getting worse. The person that went into Buffalo, the person that targeted the synagogue in, in Michigan, that we're all connected in this form of hate. And there is no hierarchy who gets hated the most. It's they want us all gone. Yeah, look, if you go back to the Buffalo shooter, did he cite replacement theory? Yeah, he did. Did he also cite socialist theories? He most definitely did. Did he target black people? 100% he did. So if you combine all of the issues with the Buffalo shooter, you had somebody who wanted to kill black people, but he also espoused ideals from the left wing of politics. Both things can occur at the same time. And they did in the Buffalo shooting. And I think the thing that's most frustrating in hearings like this is the supposition from my colleagues that if you are a white supremacist and you're on the right side of politics, the Buffalo shooter actually demonstrates that's not true. That's actually not true. The FBI does not categorize domestic violence based upon political viewpoints. They do not do that. I wish the news media would report it, but the FBI does not categorize it based upon political thoughts. They categorize it based purely on the violence that people inflict. So are we going to sit here and just try to create these narratives that sound good politically, or are we going to get to the bottom of what's actually happening in the United States of America? Congressman Donalds is right. We do need to get to the bottom of what's going on in America. And our film does just that. It tells you the story of how Marxists infiltrated America and how they use rhetoric and slogans to confuse you as to what's really going on in the present and what has gone on in the past. You can watch the film I'm talking about right now. It's called Uncle Tom 2, and it's on Epic Times TV. Epic Times is a phenomenal news publication. They are beginning to get into cinema, films, things of that nature. With a publication like this, there really is no reason for you to not be educated.